Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm Edwin, I'm the Pretty Green Vinyl Guy, and I have been absent for some time. Now, once you see this video, you will have seen that I have uploaded several videos, and I just wanted to get some videos up, show some vinyl, talk a little bit about music. I didn't want to talk about myself and what's been going on, but I did allude that I would do a video follow up and catch everybody up. So here's the catch up. This is going to be a catch up video and also a room tour of my new vinyl music listening room. So the real big reason why I haven't been on YouTube is, and I alluded, I alluded to it in a video that I think was posted seven months ago um, that showed my house in shambles because my wife and I took on the dreaded job of renovating our house and um, we did a lot of it ourselves and anybody out there that has done that knows that it's a hell of a lot of work and we both work full time so it was a lot of weekends and evenings and this and that and um, even though this room was actually one of the first rooms to get done because we work from this side of the house that way and this is the room that's furthest uh, to this side of the house um, this room is actually done more or less quite quite quickly in the grand scheme of things because it's really just you know four walls and new flooring and a paint job and uh, and then I had the fun job of of making it my room. Now this room was my wife's office and we switched rooms. My wife does much more office work than I do. She's, you know, she's the brains behind the business, the bookkeeper. And I had quite a large office slash final room that I had before. And um, although it was large, it wasn't comfortable. I used to sit at my computer desk and listen to music and um, not always optimal and it was also directly below our family room upstairs which is where my wife predominantly um, watches TV and that sort of thing so it wasn't great if I was downstairs listening to music and she's upstairs trying to hear the TV and she's stomping on the floor turn it down you know which I don't I don't blame her it wasn't it wasn't a good setup. So when we embarked on our reno, one of the things we agreed upon was that we would switch rooms. So this room being at the far end of the house is actually below what would have been my daughter's old bedroom. Um, the kids have moved out. It's, it's a spare bedroom now for when company comes. So it's uh, very rarely used, although my daughter is there right now because of course, it's Christmas break. Um, yeah, so that was the main part of why I've been missing in action. It's not that I didn't want to make videos anymore. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. Although there were some aspects of the vinyl community that were kind of pissing me off a little bit. But anyway, whatever. I'm a big boy. Um, the other thing that I did this year was I got back into running and... Um, I was a very competitive runner for many years and um, you know I've been at a, at a top masters level now for a few years and um, before that from from high school I was you know a very competitive cross-country runner um, and then of course got married had kids focused on the career didn't do anything got back into it and you know ran a bunch of marathons i've done boston i've done new york i've done chicago I've done toronto um i've done probably 40 50 half marathons and then about four years ago i i wrecked my knee i got a meniscus tear in my knee and that wasn't really psychologically that fun for me um i had to really dig deep to get out of that that emotional um, dark period um, because all of my friends I have are predominantly through running 
you know, I, I meet the same group of guys and girls three to five times a week to do a workout. And I went from that to zero. And I went to zero for like two years. And it was, it's, it's been a tough go. Anyway, through, um, by the way, meniscus tears are not surgically dealt with anymore. Um, you can, you can do a lot of, you know, stuff in, um, physio and strengthening and build the muscles around it and blah, 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 blah. And that's what I've managed to do. And, and I was able to actually get back to racing this year. And, um, I thought because I couldn't train like a lot on my knee, I decided to go into do some triathlons. And I had done some triathlons in my 20s. Um, I really got into cycling over the last couple of years and cycling is what actually saved my knee. It's the cycling motion has built all the muscle around my meniscus and given me lateral strength, which has allowed me to get back and start to build up to running again. And the thing about doing triathlons is, you know, you're you're breaking down that training into swimming, cycling, and running. So um, with that same group of friends that I mentioned earlier, um, last January, we all committed to racing a, um, a half Ironman in Victoria, British Columbia, um, which I did last July and actually the training was great. I did kind of re-injure my knee a little bit late into the training and I had to back off the running, which showed in my time for, for the half marathon. Um, but that being said, I, I did get back out. I did do it. I had a brilliant swim. I had an amazing bike ride. I had a good run and um, ended up checking half Ironman off the list. So one day, hopefully full Ironman still in the books, but um, since then my running has continued to improve um, and for Christmas I bought myself a new treadmill which is designed for um, you know bad knees, poor joints. It's got a more flexible running surface that combined with my continued physio workouts and my strengthening and my cycling and even with um, the technology and shoes um, I've been able to actually get back and build up my running stamina again and pardon me and I'm hoping to continue with that so anyway you guys are bored to tears probably happy you've turned this video off but that's the update and I only I'm only saying this because a lot of you very kindly reached out to me and asked if I was okay or you know sometimes I check in on some of the live streams and um, I'll make a comment on people like, oh, we miss you. We hope you make videos. And, and I really appreciate that. And it's just really a way to, to overall say thank you to all of you for all of your kind words and all of your, um, not really concerns, but thoughts, your thoughts of me. And I really appreciate that. Anyway, room tour. So the room is set up. Uh, it's probably 99% done. Um, Along with the room came new equipment, and I'm going to talk about that. The only thing that has remained the same is my good old Morantz uh, 2250 receiver. Um, new turntable, new CD player, and no, tell a lie, that I have had, had the Denon tape deck for a while. So let's, um, let's grab the camera. Okay, everyone, this is the view as you walk through the door from the hallway into my music room. We'll start in this far left corner. You can see I have some floating shelf up there with some uh, Beatles box sets. That's the cassette tape from the 1980s roll top. Most of those aren't even open. Uh, here's the Beatles CD stereo set and the Led Zeppelin Japanese CD set. That was a poster that my daughter had made for me with the uh, Come Together by the Beatles. This is a signed Paul Weather, Weller, Sodder's Pattern. With Larry, you can see Paul Sharpie on there. 
And that's a Who poster from a Who concert my son and I went to. Uh, there's my Rocket rocket Record Doctor uh, vinyl cleaning machine. So basically it's manual to clean it and then you turn on the vacuum and it cleans it. So it's a vacuum cleaner. Some of my cassette tapes. This is the basement foundation which stretches all the way around and I've been able to utilize those two walls to use some stuff to use to display stuff. Uh, the records on this side are on the Calyx 2x4 uh, and there's two of them side by side. We have some shelving that I've made myself to hold some CDs. I had actually gotten rid of most of my CDs and uh, but then I've, I've I did have some left and then I, I've bought in a few new things and I wanted somewhere to display them. I do need to take that apart to paint it and uh, put it together properly but I wanted everything up off the floor and that's how that works. And then coming around this way we have another floating shelf where I've got my little Beatles guys displayed. I've got my two signed Elvis Costello. Uh, some box sets on top. And then the bulk of the rest of my vinyl, which was my original Calyx, uh, which are the three uh, by fives, which they don't make anymore, which is too bad. And then back out the door. So if we go back around to this corner, and we go down to the vinyl. In that first cubby right here, those are my Tome Poets in the blue note. Uh, they do sneak over to around there. And then it's alphabetical. Um, you know, there's the Cold Trains, there's Miles Davis's. And that goes to this cubicle and then drops down. And that finishes my jazz. So there's six cubicles. So I've got lots of room to grow my jazz collection. That's every record collector's nightmare is where are they gonna put their vinyl? Uh, the two white doors are just simply where I have storage, sleeves, record cleaning solution, all that kind of stuff. It's nice to keep that nice and clean out of the way. Then we come over here And this cubicle, these are my MoFi's and my analog productions. So my, my audio file uh, records that I keep separate. I don't separate out Japanese pressings. Maybe I will one day because I do have a lot of Japanese pressings, but that is my audio file through there. And then we go into my Beatles. There's the Japanese Beatles. Uh, and then into solo beetles with wings on the end. And then we start basically rock, pop, um, alphabetically. So, you know, there's probably Aerosmith, Animals, Arcade Fire, Beach Boys, um, David Bowie, there's a whole bunch of Bowie there. Uh, Into the Seas, Costello, lots of Elvis Costello. And then we work our way around. Into the D's, the Doors, Fleetwood Mac, uh, the Gallagher Brothers, Genesis, your J's, all your Kinks. All your Led Zeppelins into the M's. There's an Oasis box set as we continue through. Uh, Radiohead, Smashing Pumpkins. There's a Sade box set. And then down to the bottom, you've got your uh, Oliver Springsteen, Talking Heads. U2, Neil Young, XTC, and it finishes with some soundtracks and various parts. It's 
So that's the vinyl. Um, this is the setup. So I did get a new turntable. I wanted to upgrade to something where the motor was outside of the turntable itself. So not attached to the actual turntable. That was the next level up that I wanted to, to get to. This is a Roxanne, which is a British uh, company. And uh, it's in lovely condition, it's refurbished. Got it from a guy who professionally refurbishes turntables. It's the Tabritz model. Um, so you basically, you have a free moving lathe that is not affected by the hum of the motor, which is here. So separating out the motor from the turntable, that's kind of the next level up. What's cool about this one too is once it plays, you can actually remove the pin. So now nothing is touching the vinyl. The, the mat that is made for this is designed to keep the record without it spinning off of um, its place. Right now I have a, the Ordofon Red on there. I did have a blue, um, but I think there's too many hours on the blue and the red's actually sounding better. And then of course we have my Marantz, the 2250. This is the rose gold, although the light doesn't show it right now. So it's a bit of a rarer faceplate. I have had this for a number of years. It still gives you that rich, warm, Marantz sound. Everything works perfectly. I took it apart and cleaned everything myself in the summer. And uh, that was my first go at that from a couple of videos and that went very well. I was starting to get a bit of scratchy on the volume and it was very easy to fix myself. And then we go down to the Arcam CD player. This is an audiophile rated CD player. This is the CD92. It does have a little scratch right there. Um, but if you want to take your CD listening to the next level, I highly recommend getting into something uh, a bit more um, audiophile quality. It plays every type of CD known to man. Um, I had CDs that my other CD player couldn't read. This has no problem. It also came with a remote, which makes it fun just to lay down and relax. And then last but not least, I have my Denon cassette tape player. Um, this one's unique as it has the, the door that slides out like so. Uh, also a very highly rated. And then we have our acoustic research. These are the R AR4s, um, which are new speakers that I not new, they're old speakers, but new speakers for me. And I've got them up on these little shelves to get them up off the ground. I'd like to get some nice speaker stands. I've been hemming and hawing over different ones, but I haven't uh, gotten uh, anything picked out just yet. Um, yeah, so that's the setup as far as the, the music. Um, and then, yeah, you can see I've got some CDs built all through here. So some things like that are collectible. That's a, a recent copy of Definitely Maybe I found. That's a Japanese version on white vinyl. I'm very happy about that. Again, we got the Roger Waters and poster, and then we've got some of my... Most of these are empty and I've actually filed the records. Um, and yeah, just my, I don't know why I bought that, but I bought it probably t too many glasses of wine one night and found it on eBay and it arrived several weeks later and I thought, are you a kid? Why did you buy that? But anyway, it's nice to display it. And then I've got my 
Elvis Costello to Edwin. And uh, the hay clock face. Spinning vinyl in the music room. So yeah, that's my overview of the room. Headphones, what's playing. That's just a light for brightening up the room while I'm shooting this video. And then, yeah, the chair and the ottoman, which I get to sit in and enjoy my sound. I can pull those speakers, I can slide them up and down to get them further away from that back wall. It's just if they're too far forward, it's hard to reach those corners of the vinyl. So I move them in and out as I'm playing it. And yeah, that is my music room. So I hope you've enjoyed that tour. It's something I've wanted to get going for a while. And um, I look forward to many, many evenings of enjoying my room and the fruits of our labor. And uh, thank you for watching my tour. And until next time, Vinyl Community, thank you.